What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Astro DFS bringing you a new video. Today's video I'm going over the Monday night showdown between the Rams and 49ers. Now I'm going over on both DraftKings and FanDuel. If you've been in the channel before you know this is something that I like to do. I think it helps people that use DraftKings or FanDuel or both and try to find some opportunities on both sites where the pricing is different the pricing is usually always going to be different between the two sites uh and today there's a few of them that really stand out to me and let's go over it so obviously if you look back at last year we got three games between the rams and 49ers um san frank takes both of them in the regular season and the rams beat them uh to go to the super bowl and man it there was there was a lot to uh, to try to take in and dissect and figure out uh, and the majority of it is this this top guy here that you're paying a lot for was the most consistent guy in those three games Cooper Cup obviously he is Stafford's number one guy you look at it this year just the the pass attempts going down um, the opponents they faced I mean you look at Atlanta you look at Arizona. Um, just poor defenses in my opinion uh, but you look at Cooper Cup's numbers 15 14 6 also going down um, last week having his lowest game of the season but you're getting the 49ers defense um, both teams missing people uh, especially on the offensive line San Fran missing uh, missing the best tackle in all football um, and the Rams missing a couple offensive line guys as well. Rams missing a corner. Uh, San Fran missing a linebacker. Missing uh, Davis Moore in the secondary. So there's there's some injuries. So there's going to be some guys that might not be as good as the starters. Clearly that San Fran tackle. It's going to be really interesting looking at it. Uh, the 49ers without Trent Williams is not good. It is not a good thing. Um, but... They are still favorites right now at home against the Rams in this huge divisional game. So let's break it down. Cooper Cup, the most expensive guy, uh, like I said, the most consistent guy in their three games last year. Um, most expensive and well worth it. Like Cooper Cup is a pretty hard fade in this matchup. Um, between him and Debo Samuel are the two guys that you know are going to get the opportunities for both teams. Uh, Debo. It goes Cup, Stafford, Garoppolo, Debo. Uh, on DraftKings, Cup, Stafford, Debo, Garoppolo. So a bit of a change there. Um, and then you you get different here. This is where I, I like the opportunities. So on DraftKings, after the, the four top projected point guys, uh, you get Jeff Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Cam Akers, Darrell Henderson, which DraftKings usually does with running backs like this. Um, so game makers, uh, Darrell Henderson, George Kittle, Allen Robinson. And then it goes to quarterbacks, lesser players. Now here is where FanDuel is just giving you basically a free play. So you look, Jeff Wilson, Darrell Henderson, Tyler Higby's up here, Cam Akers, the defenses, Brandon Ayuk, Allen Robinson, a kicker. George Kittle is 8,500 on FanDuel. I don't care how hurt, what his points were last week, anything like that. Getting someone like George Kittle, who is a game changer, he's a game wrecker, that is what he does in a big time game like this at 8,500. If we put him in, let's say we put him in as captain. I'm not, I don't know if I will or will not, but let's just put him in as captain. Puts us up almost a thousand. Now, putting someone like Stafford brings us down a little bit, uh, especially with all these big name guys here. So, George Kittle to me on FanDuel is almost a free pick. 8500 way underpriced. Look on DraftKings, we get 8300 per player. We'll put him in as a flex, not the captain. And we go up $300. So not that big of a change. Uh, but if you get different, and this is where I like to do something like this, put him in as captain, you only go down 600 which isn't bad with those expensive guys up there. Um, but on DraftKings, you also get a discount on Tyler Higby as well. So, FanDuel has, they like the the defenses a lot here. They're priced above Brandon Ayuk, Allen Robinson, the kickers, obviously, uh, George Kittle. On DraftKings, you're getting all those guys, all of them, 
above the defenses and kicker, even Ben Skoranek. Um, Juwan Jennings down here is really cheap for San Fran. Uh, now I know he's not anything big at all, uh, but $2,000 uh, week one against Chicago was Trey Lance's favorite target, it seemed like, uh, other than Debo. Um, wasn't anything to be scared of, of Brandon Ayuk or Debo. Obviously, those are, uh, you get Debo, Kittle, Ayuk as the top three targets. With Kittle being back, Juwan Jennings probably not going to be as involved. Um, but let, let's just break it down again. So Cooper Cup, I like him on both sides. It's going to be hard to play on FanDuel. I get it. But having Cooper Cup and then having a discount on someone like George Kittle makes it very easy. And then someone like Allen Robinson as well at 9000 And you go back up in price, you can get Matt Stafford, and then you get 9500 And guess who else is there? Is Brandon Ayuk. So just an example, obviously you don't have Debo, you don't have Garoppolo, you don't have Wilson, you don't have the running back, but that is the option. So one of the things I, I see when trying to break down this game and trying to find picks is looking at who San Fran's played. We can look at it on DraftKings, uh, but if you go and look on any stats, you look at their opponents, though. You get Chicago, weak defense, um, San Fran puts up 10 points. Week two against Seattle, another weak defense, and they put up some points. Week three, they get a better team. Probably the best team they've seen. They lose by one. And he put up 10 points. And you look at Debo's numbers. Debo has not been a huge factor. So he's either been heavy in the run game or heavy in the pass game. We really haven't seen it both. This is probably the most consistent against Seattle. Um, but you look at, like, even Brandon Ayuk. He gets targets. Not a lot, not a lot of yards. They're facing what I would consider now the best team they've faced all season in the Rams. The Rams' defense hasn't been what we all thought they would with um, Aaron Donald, Bobby Wagner, and Jalen Ramsey, those three at each of the positions. Um, they've allowed a lot of points and a lot of yards. And we look at the Rams. So week one, they automatically get the matchup of the year. They get Buffalo and get blown out. Then they get week two against Atlanta take a huge lead, and Atlanta almost comes back to beat them. And then week three against Arizona, where they get that win. And it's still, you're facing the last two weeks, Arizona's defense has not been good. Atlanta's defense has not been good. But week one, you get Buffalo. So they've seen a top team. They know this division game. They went 0-2 in the regular season against them last year. I think it's going to be interesting. I think the Rams are going to pressure that offensive line without Trent Williams now. Uh, I still think San Fran is going to do what San Fran always does and run the ball. That's that's what they do. Now, what's interesting to me looking at is who the the 49ers have at running back. So, Jeff Wilson's your running back one. Obviously, they're going to use Debo in the run game. You can see it here. Um, 17 attempts in three games. Uh, but we look at some of the other running backs. So, you get Jordan Mason... One carry last week against Denver. Kyle Juszczyk gets a 24-yard reception, which Kyle Juszczyk at 1,000, if you're playing 150 lines, you better have some Kyle Juszczyk because he's just that player that gets a random touchdown and you're going to love it. Uh, other than that, like, there has not been much of anything for running backs for San Fran. Uh, Davis Price, obviously, been hurt since week two. Elijah Mitchell out since week one. Jeff Wilson has got a majority other than Debo Samuel in that running back room. So that's what's interesting to me. Um, when it comes to the running game for the Rams, Cam Akers, Darrell Henderson, I just, I don't like them. Uh, you could look at the uh, the volume for Darrell Henderson. Week two, or week one, 13, 10, 4. Starts to go down. Yards, not really that much of a difference. Six targets in three games but only one target in the last two. Uh, and then we look at Cam Akers, and we see that he starts to get more volume, but still three targets in the last two games, three targets in all three. I won't really count week one. It didn't seem like they wanted to get him involved in that blowout. 
so the running backs on both sides don't interest me that much at all. Uh, I mean, obviously you get a little pay down for Cam Akers on FanDuel, but that's it. Tyler Higby is not a huge guy for me this week. Even if he gets some points, I just don't love that matchup against San Fran's linebackers. The linebackers in San Fran are just always good. That's one of the things they always keep consistent in their organization, it seems like, is that tight end. Uh, Allen Robinson against that secondary is another piece. You saw what Odell was able to do. And now, don't get me wrong, Odell and Allen Robinson are two different styles of receivers. Um, Allen Robinson is more of an aggressive catcher. Uh, you throw them, throw him the ball in one-on-one, -on -one and he's that guy. Odell is more of a route runner where he's going to get open, and that's how he's going to get his receptions. Allen Robinson, you're, he's pretty much not going to get uh, a opening like Odell would but if you're having man coverage something short that's the guy you go to you just look at his targets he's only got 12 targets in three weeks this year which is interesting because we look at Ben Skronik and he's got 13 targets in three games and you are paying 4,400 for him on DraftKings compared to Allen Robinson's 1,800 now the matchup isn't great for any of the Rams receivers not named Cooper Cup but if you are going to play receiver and you look at Ben Skronik, now granted, Allen Robinson has got red zone targets, which gives you the advantage, but they make it clear they use Ben Skronik. And you look at his receptions per target, he's got a pretty good catch rate, which is interesting there. Um, But on FanDuel, like you look at the difference here, you're, you get a $1,500 difference um, in Skronik versus Allen Robinson. Um, so George Kittle on FanDuel to me is, is a great play. Uh, I think both kickers can be in play today. Uh, the defenses can be in play. Um, but as far as not going the kicker defensive route, uh, Cooper Cup, Stafford, uh, Debo, guys that I want. Uh, Ayuk is another guy that I want. George Kittle is another guy. Finding, it, uh, finding picking the difference between Allen Robinson, Ben Skronik, definitely a play uh and then for a cheap just throw off i i i don't know what this means marlon mack gets his second game uh and he's 200 obviously they i showed you they didn't use mason they barely use use check but 200 uh if you're playing 150 i might sneak him in there in just a, a couple of the lineups there uh on FanDuel, he's down here at 6500 which is interesting because Raymond McLeod, Kyle Juszczyk are both there. Uh, Tutu Atwell and, I mean, Kendall Blanton. Like, guys that have seen snaps at least. Um, but that's going to be interesting. So, uh, as far as the defenses, like, if I'm going to go with defense, I'm going to go the... I, I'd play both. Like, I wouldn't just go one or the other. Obviously, both games last year were high... Like, they were decent scoring games. Um, and we've seen both defenses, like what they've given up, um, the Rams, you just, you get seven sacks, three fumbles, four picks, uh, the points allowed have gotten better, uh, but the teams they faced, I mean, really haven't been that much. We see Sam Fran's d defense and it's, it's almost similar. Three picks, only one fumble though, uh, eight sacks. And the points allowed, I mean, is crazy in what you get in the payoff. If you are playing the defenses, go for it. I'd play both. I, I Both defensive lines are really good. Both offensive lines are banged up. Missing starters. Um, this is probably the Rams' second best team they've seen all year. Uh, for the 49ers, this is the best team they've seen all year. Um, that Denver game was something else um but as far as that that's what i go um as far as values on DraftKings, i mean there's juan jennings down here don't love it um Skronik is probably that cheap guy that i go to if i don't put any kickers or defenses in my lineup uh on FanDuel, we i i mention it and i keep mentioning it george kittle to me uh even robbie gold here at eight thousand. um like, both of these guys are, are values. George Kittle is the ultimate value on FanDuel. Just completely mispriced, in my opinion. I don't care if he only gets five points. Getting somebody with his, like, capability 
his elite talent for that cheap on FanDuel is crazy. So hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, if you guys did, please leave a like and subscribe uh, to see all this content that I post. I try to post for every showdown. Uh, I definitely try to get a main slate video in there. If my work schedule allows me to. I try to get those videos out for you guys. And if you guys like this difference between FanDuel and DraftKings, comparing them, uh, just let me know in the comments. If you guys are interested in joining us where we had an amazing day yesterday in cash, uh, definitely click the link for our Discord. shows you all our packages that we offer, uh, fantasy, DFS, um, betting, and any questions that you have revolving around football this year. So if you guys are interested in that, please click the link in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one.